Hey, so um, the the author update 1.5 is ready now, and I yeah just gonna talk you through the changes. So um, first off, I'm on the project page here from GitHub, and you can go to releases. So um, at the moment here is 1.4. Um, when you click on it, there should be a 1.5. I haven't uploaded it yet, but I will. And um, yeah, the first change you will notice is instead of two bin files, I'm gonna include three. And the third one is for the display, because as you know, um, you can use it with a display, with a little OLED display. And um, here in the code, when you, you just have to uncomment that, and then you can use the display. You have to uh, include a library and everything, but that, that's all described in README. I will include a bin file compiled with all these settings um, ready to use. And yeah, the only thing I changed from before is that these pins are changed from the dis for the display. So the SDA pin is the one now, and the SCL pin is the two now. Um, if you have maybe already display set up, you may want to change this, or just of course you can just change it in the code and then upload it again. And I added a display on off button, and I set it to um, GPIO zero. GPIO zero is normally um, the flash button, so to turn your node MCU or whatever dev board into um, the flashing mode so you can flash a new firmware on it. Um, but it's just used for booting to check if uh, it should go into this flashing mode or not. After that you can use the button as regular in output button, uh, pin as regular in output and um, I just used it to for making a display on off button because most development boards already have a button on this pin and yeah, you can just turn the display with that on and off. You can of course change that and use your custom button or whatever. So um, yeah, that's uh, for that. Oh, and when we're already on the site, um, a lot of people ask me questions I already have answered. So um, maybe before you ask a question, maybe you want to go to wiki and go to FAQ. Like uh, most questions I get are already explained here like how to reset the board, what to do when you forgot um, your login credentials and this this kind of stuff. So um, here 1.5 version is running and um, yeah, let's, let's begin with the settings. So first thing I changed is the LED pin. I added that. So um, there is an LED when you, when you had, when you have use LED enabled and you start an attack, the LED will, um, start um, lighting up and you can change the pin for that. Um, pin 2 is the standard pin for the ESP12 module which is used on the Node MCUs. So um, that's the default setting so you will see the little LED on the Node MCU turn on when you start an attack. Um, you can change that because people ask me um, they want to use a other pin with a custom LED and yeah you just you can change it here now and then save but you have to restart the module that's that's all you need to do. Okay, then um, one second beacon interval. Okay, so the fold is 100 milliseconds, which means 10 beacon packets per second. So that's the default setting for other devices and routers as well when they send out beacons. Um, you can change that to a one, pack, one, one packet per second interval. Um, that means that it won't send as many packets, which makes the whole thing, of course, faster and you can better start multiple attacks and stuff like that. But that's optional. I found out that it's um, it works the best when it has 10 packets per second. Then like all of the clients immediately get all the beacons, get, get all the ex fake access points in their list and everything. But it also works with one, sec uh, one packet per second. Mm, but maybe the, the client has, has to scan a bit longer. So yeah, like if turned off, it works the best for me, but depending on what attack you are doing, um, you maybe want to change this to get this bit of um, stability and everything. So, um, but that's optional, you don't have to do this. Okay, um, packet rate is on you. Um, oh, make change interval, okay. So both beacon and probe packets, um, they are sent from one MAC address or they have, a, they have a MAC address in their packets saying it comes from that MAC address. It's of course fake and every packet has another MAC address. 
So all these beacon packets that are sent out, every packet has another MAC address. So the client thinks, oh, this beacon packet, oh, that's another access point. So I'm going to put it in list and then it sees the next packet and it sees, oh, another MAC address and another SSID. So a new uh, access point in the list. And um, I gonna uh, I ha added the setting here that you can change the interval because every four seconds now that's the default value it's gonna um, refresh that mm, MAC addresses. So for like ah yeah okay let's let's show it here. If you have a random list here, every of uh, these SSIDs they have a random generated MAC address behind them, and every four seconds the MAC address behind them will change. You can't like, you can't send a random MAC address with every packet because the client, um, it only will put the SSID in the list when you do being spam, if it gets multiple packets from the same MAC address. So it knows, okay, the access point is here. It's sending constantly. I gotta put it into the list. So you have to send them constantly. But when you change them after a few seconds, um, they're gonna put the new one in the list too, but they will still um, have the old one for a few seconds in the uh, still in the list. So um, yeah, when you you can you can play around with this setting and see like if it will increase the number of access points in the list when you scan or not. Or yeah, just you can change that. You can play around with it. Um, I found it useful depending on uh, what are you trying to do. For example, I did change this to um, mess around with my Wi-Fi pineapple. You can see that in another video. And yeah. Okay, so um, what I changed under text is this whole adding procedure for SSID, for putting SSIDs into the list. So um, first off, um, I got a comment saying like I removed the beacon clone attack, but that's not true. Um, I did change it that it only runs from the list now but you can still clone um, access points. So I selected one here and click clone and it will put the SSID in there and how many clones I want. And I click add and then it will copy and uh, yeah, put the SSID into the list. So the thing with the clones is you can't have the exact same SSID because the, the client which scans for these networks, it will see the same SSID, then it will put only one in the list, it will not put multiple in the list because it just thinks, okay, same SSID, that's one network because one network with the same name could have multiple routers, for example, with the same name. So it's only ones in the list. Um, so when you, when you only say, um, when you put that to zero, it will only add one, just the same way you put it into this uh, input here. But it, if you say like, okay, let's say seven, then um, it will clone them. And by that, I mean, it will put spaces at the end, more spaces at the end, even more spaces at the end. Uh, at some point it will put a little dot at the beginning or a space at the beginning um, just to get this, um, yeah, change the SSID without the user noticing. Because you can see it, it looks the same, but these are different. These are different and um, yeah, that's the trick. So clone is still there. You can add them here. If, yeah, like I said, when you say zero, it's gonna just put the SSID in there as you said. If you, you can say, of course, like 55 or something, then it will only put as much in the list as it can. And yeah, you can all, uh, still do the random thing. And what's also new is um, there's a random mode. Oh, it's, oh yeah, now it's enabled. Um, which will generate every few seconds uh, a new total random generated list here. It will regenerate it every five seconds. Um, but only if you have an attack running. Um, then you should see there it changed. Okay, every five seconds this will change. So that's cool if you wanna like just spam out a bunch of random things. You can do this now. And yeah, that's basically it. Um, the only other thing I changed is on info. Um, there is a contributors um, section now. So everyone who contributed to the project, you can see this on the GitHub page as well, um, is listed here now. So yeah, that's really cool. 
And yeah, that's basically it. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, but please um, go to wiki and read the FAQ first. Okay.